so that is about the psychological support for the needy students. And uh, if a student require physical infrastructure, that is also there in the university. So wheelchair access to the buildings, but not much in the uh, faculty premises. But if you go to Kalania, Kalania, we have a lot of wheelchair access uh, to the buildings. And also restroom compliance with the special needs. So that is about the physical infrastructure. So at the Kalania, uh, uh, they were, we will be doing the uh, accessible uh, surveys are conducting and they are modifying physical infrastructure uh, for a student to access, for a, any kind of student with disabilities to access the infrastructure. So for a student, if a student need any kind of support, they can contact their student mentors because each of the student have a student mentor. They can contact student mentors. And also, they can contact the CCSD or the Coordinating Center for the Students with Disabilities. Also, they can contact Kalana Mituru Sevana. Uh, Kalana Mituru Sevana mainly provides support for the students who, are, who need the counseling and the psychological support. So for a student, according to their comfortable zones, they can talk to their mentors or the CCSD representatives or a Kalanamitunu Sevana if they need any sort of support. Right. So let me uh, discuss the last point under this disability equal access policy. So under this uh, equal access policy at our university, as I mentioned, uh, there is a center for the students with disabilities called Coordinating Center for the Students with Disabilities. So this center, uh -huh. we offer supports for the students with disabilities uh, through uh, relevant and timely advice, guidance, and uh, guidance and medical or a psychosocial or a academic support uh, as necessary to enable equal and equitable access to university education as their peers without disabilities. So we provide this support. Uh, we, uh, we recommend or we guide students for equal access and equal opportunities for education to develop their individual growth and independence. So let me discuss with this same uh, CC, uh, CCSD offers uh, confidential discussions for the students. If they need to discuss with any of the matters, academic, uh, psychosocial, or even socioeconomic concerns that they have, they can discuss with the uh, relevant officers uh, or CCSD representatives. And also, with the, after these confidential discussions, uh, CCSD will provide them information, recommendations, and guide, needed guidance uh, for them to access education and to all as aspects of their university life. And also, um, we will advise, the CCSD will advise on available courses course combination and assessment demands. But of course, we might not be able to recommend exam waived due to the student's disability, but we would be able to see the possibilities of amendments or the adjustments for their exam. So uh, we will be discussing with the relevant academics to do these adjustments or the amendments with the request of the students. And also, we will provide special arrangements to access medical, psychosocial support and specialist assessment and intervention for speech, language, communication difficulties, or dyslexia, or any other specific learning disorders. And also, we will advise on exam accommodations in consultation with the experts and in discussion with the members of the faculty. Uh, we also uh, support to secure re uh, relevant specialist assistive technologies and devices. 
So for example, if a student who needs hearing aids, but having a difficulty to buy a hearing aid, we might, we will offer, we try to offer them a hearing aid through several donations. And also for a student who are having a visual impairment, who needs support for the academia, uh, we are at the university, we are providing them audio recorders with the collaboration with the social services department. So likewise, the assistive technologies and devices they need, we, we, we are supporting uh, we are supporting them to uh, get those uh, support as well. So this is what actually we offer through the uh, coordinating center for the students with disabilities. So with that, so this is what we cover under the equal access policy of our university. So Clifton, now I'll move on to the question you asked me earlier. You asked me about what sort of reasonable accommodations are available for our students at yes, the university. So I'll move on to that. I'm sorry, I have another slide for you all to show. Uh, so this is about the uh, data uh, of the registrants at the Coordinating Center for the Students with Disabilities uh, for 2023. So for the Faculty of Arts, we have uh, 37 students registered. Uh, uh, 20 from the humanities, faculty of humanities, and 20 from the faculty, uh, 17 from the faculty of social sciences, the students with visual impairments, hearing impairments, and physical impairments, and also the specific learning difficulties are, they are included in this 37. And we have two from the science faculty, we have two from the commons and management faculty, and we have two from our medical faculty. So with these two students, one student with low vision, not a blind, low vision student, and we provide extra large font. Exam papers we provide through extra large fonts uh, according to the assessment uh, results. And for a student who is having this heart condition, heart problem, uh, with the medical recommendations, we provide additional time for the viva examination. So uh, for a, a little example for the question you asked Clifton about the reasonable accommodations what we provide at our university. Uh, so let me discuss in detail now. Uh, so let me share this. Uh, Clifton, is this visible? Reasonable accommodation and examination for yes, students? Madam. It's visible. visible. Uh, uh, did you click the link, madam? The, did you yes. go inside the link? Uh, no, madam, it's not visible. The link is not, not visible. visible. Right. I can, we can only see the slides, madam. Okay, let me share my screen again. Is it now visible, Clifton? Yes, madam, it's visible. Okay, so actually this is the uh, reasonable accommodations uh, that we provide for a students with disabilities. So as I mentioned, this is a Senate approved document. So everything is documented. So there is a procedure for granting these accommodations. I'm not, I'll not be discussing it. And uh, there, there are a list of reasonable accommodations for a students uh, they can apply or we can grant for. So they can apply and we can grant all this accommodation according to the need of the student. So for a student with visual difficulties, so there is a list. So I'll, I'll read one. The question paper need to be offered in a format accessible to the students, such as in Braille or using voice output software. So uh, there are the students who request the exam papers in Braille format. So at the university, we provide the Braille access. Also, for, we provide them to write uh, answers by using their Braille uh, machines. So that's there. So such sort of accommodations are there for uh, students with visual difficulties. So there are whistles. And for uh, students with hearing difficulties, uh, again, there is a list. Uh, so as an example, uh, uh, we, we, give, we recommend uh, examiners uh, to uh, give uh, like face-to-face uh, -face instructions rather than uh, uh, giving instruction from far away to the students, like there are 
uh, several accommodations discussed for a students with uh, hearing difficulties. And also, as in this last point, a student with a hearing difficulty may be offered seating close to the examination supervisor. So then the instructions they can clearly hear. So that is for the students with uh, hearing difficulties. And also there are a list for a student with physical difficulties. Uh, so we can recommend a special seating, including use of personal wheelchairs, also included into that. For them, they can use ACs if they are AAC users. So sort of recommendations are provided. And for a student with specific learning difficulties, this is one of the important area, Clifton, because uh, uh, the visual difficulties, hearing difficulties, physical difficulties, most of the time, those are vis visible difficulties of the students. But specific learning difficulties, kind of a hidden disability. So the student may appear as a typical normal student, but they might be having difficulties because in Sri Lanka, the prevalence of specific learning difficulties are 20% for, for any given population. So with that, in any uh, sort of situation, there may be students, undiagnosed students with specific learning difficulties. So through this center, uh, we will be assessing the students for the specific learning difficulties. And if we diagnose them as they are having specific learning difficulties, such as dyslexia or dyscalculia or written expression disorders, we will provide uh, necessary accommodations for them. For example, for a student with specific learning disorder, the most, uh, so we will recommend calibri font papers for those students. So that's there for the specific learning difficulties. And also we all have uh, special accommodations for the students with psychological mental health difficulties. So as I mentioned, we at any point can get psychological problems, psychological uh, 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 difficulties, mental health problems, according to the situations that we have to face under different conditions. So at that point, with the specific medical uh, recommendations, uh, we may provide, we will be able to provide the students support for the, uh, their uh, support for academics and the exams through, uh, as an example, providing them special seating arrangements. We may provide them breaks. Uh, and we may provide access to medications uh, so and also extra time for them to write the exam papers according to the need of the student. Um, and also for the medical needs and for the environmental factors, according to the students, uh, 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 the case by case, we will modify and we will accommodate different, different accommodations. And also through this policy, as I mentioned, the students can appeal as well. So if they are not uh, happy or comfortable with the accommodations that we provide, they will be able to appeal. So this is what actually included in the equal access policy uh, and the uh, policy of our university and our faculty. So for a student, if they re require a special reasonable accommodations, uh, they will be able to apply through the CCST. They can, uh, or they can uh, request the applications to apply uh, for a reasonable accommodations uh, through the CCSD or a depart uh, their, depart uh, their department heads or the department office or their faculty officers to get, they can get this application forms to apply for the reasonable accommodations. Uh, do you want to see the application form as well, Clifton? Uh, yes, madam. I think that would be better. The application form. Uh, the Is that form visible to you, Clifton? Uh, yes, madam. It's visible for us. I have opened the application. Yes, no? Yes. 
Right. So this is the application form. Uh, for a mo for this moment, the student can get if they are more comfortable in Sinhala, they can get the Sinhala application form. And if they are comfortable in English, they can get the English ap application form. But for the moment, I should be telling, we don't have the Tamil version of this application, but I think we will be getting it in a very recent future. So these are the reasonable accommodation application. This is the reasonable ac application accommodation that the student can get. And so they can uh, describe the situation and they can mention the uh, accommodations that they are asking for. And then if they receive the accommodations for their O levels and A levels, they can provide us the proof for that and they can submit this application form to the uh, Coordinating Center for the Students with Disabilities. And then when we receive these applications, we have inter we will have interviews with them. We will have assessments if needed. And we will consider the medical recommendations, medical reports of the students, and the committee will decide the reasonable accommodations that would be granted for the student. Um, so, so now, uh, yeah. I think we have a very clear idea on the policies in our faculty. Most of us would have understood like, what are the policies and how can we ask us, what is what are the systems that are that are implemented in our faculty itself. Now, I have this pressing question, madam. Uh, so, madam, now since we have a very clear idea on the policies in our faculty, what is the situation like in other higher education institutes, like right? government and private institutes? What are the what is the situation right there? Okay, so Clifton, as I mentioned in the uh, earlier very beginning, so now we are coming into the process, and most of the higher education institutions. Uh, state universities are providing these uh, reasonable accommodations and the equal access for the education for the students with disabilities. So uh, this is here, I have uh, uh, given a web link. This is the PTIM, the Postgraduate uh, Institute of Medicine, uh, reasonable accommodation guidelines. So for anyone interested, you can read it through this web link. Uh, you can just search through the internet and you can get the reasonable accommodations that they have described uh, for the postgraduate students at the PGIM. So likewise, in majority of the many universities, state universities and the private universities, they have this equal access policy and they provide, now they provide uh, equal opportunities for the students with disabilities to go through this academia and the academic uh, situation. That was insightful, madam. That was really helpful for us. Uh, and madam, uh, you told us about exam accommodations. That's what we, you were talking about so far, that how can our students in exams, uh, they can use these accommodations and write these exams. But uh, my question for you is, madam, exams is not the final paper. It's the process that we have to go through, the studying, the learning, the lectures. So now can you give us some insights on how students can accommodate it out of the exam halls? how we support, how we can support them du during their learning period. Okay. Uh, so Clifton, and through this policy, actually, even though we uh, like emphasize the accommodations for the exams, uh, for a student who requests us support for their academics, we offer them the support for their academics as well. So as an example, uh, for the students with hearing impairments, if they request us, the sign language interpreters, we have a pool of sign language interpreters for them to support during their lecture hours. So there is a pool and they will come for the lecture theaters and they will do the sign language interpretation for the students. Uh, and also uh, for the students with visual impairments, they can bring their own uh, braille machines to the lecture halls to get down notes if they want. And as I mentioned, through the social services department, we will be providing them the audio recorder so they can record the lectures and they can use it later for their academic purposes. And also for the students with visual impairments, uh, the coordinating center provides accessible computer literacy course for them to develop their computer literacy skills. So that is also not for the exams, but for their 
independent lifestyle. So they have accessible IT codes as well at the Kalania premises. So such sort of support. So if the student requests us a support, we will be able to grant this support by assessing and looking through the need of that student. So that's the uplifted. So no, we are not only providing support for the accommodation exams, for the entire, so that is the aim of the CCSD as well. For entire university life, if they need support for any support, sort of support for their entire university life, we will be able to uh, grant uh, by looking through the barriers and we may have the barriers, we may have difficulties, but we try to provide the maximum support for the students with disabilities for their academia. That was good, madam. Uh, thank you for that. So, madam, uh, we have talked about higher education, about tertiary education. And my question here is, uh, it could be the final question that uh, it's an important question here that uh, it's a truth that in our country, entering into a higher educational institute is competitive and difficult. There's only a very less number of students who actually even pass the advanced levels and come into uh, the higher education institutes. So primary and secondary education plays a major role in the selection process of this tertiary education. So what do you think is the state in these levels? And how can we avoid the students with disability falling through the cracks of our education system? But, uh, thank you very much for this question, Clifton, because that is some uh, that is an area a majority of the students and the society is not aware of mm -hmm. because uh, in the education ministry and the examination department of Sri Lanka, uh, they also provide reasonable accommodations for the students with disabilities. So uh, they have uh, they have list of reasonable accommodations that a student can apply for the exams, but they need to have a medical uh, report and the medical assessment findings to a medical professionals about their disabilities. With that recommendation, assessment recommendations, their students can apply for the exams under the special category. So if they apply for the exams under the special category, there is a list of reasonable accommodations. So under that, there are 21 general guidelines for any student with disabilities can apply for. And uh, there are some specific guidelines as well. So as I showed you in our university, so we have very specific guidelines for very specific conditions. So likewise, in the examination department also, they have very specific guidelines for students with um, hearing impairments, students with visual impairments, students with neurodevelopmental disorders such as autism, specific learning disorders, uh, students with any sort of physical disability. So there are listed special accommodations. So for a student, when they register for the exams, they can apply under the special category uh, for the exams and when you apply for the special category you need to have a report from a medical professionals to support your application and when you apply under that category the examination department will again do an assessment and they will provide the accommodations but of course in reality sometimes all the accommodations that the medical professionals will recommend might not be granted for a student but uh, so, as I said, the situation is much more better now, and we are hoping for the best in the future. So, that is the current situation in Sri Lanka uh, related to the uh, primary and secondary education. For the education institutions also, now they are practicing the inclusive education and the education for all concept. So, all the students with disabilities are now trying to inc be included in the mainstream education system uh, by providing them the accommodations uh, required for a student according to the individual basis. So, that is the current situation, Clifton. Okay, madam, that was insightful. I hope I knew this, that we all knew this information as advanced level students, as all level students. So, we could have, we have seen kids, really kids that had our friends, it could be our friends, our family who have learning difficulties. It's a very 
highly prevalent problem in Sri Lanka. So if we knew these things, instead of rejecting them as innate disabled people, rejecting them as like unable to study or stupid, we could have helped them. So this is something that everyone should come to know. This is a very, very important lesson that we all have to take on and to spread it. And now as students, and uh, another question for you, Madam, it could be a general question and that you can give us some advice on this. I hope so. Now as students and health professionals that we are all here, we are together. And as a society, what is the kind of impact we can make as a unified community, as an expert in this inclusion? What is your advice in this, Madam? So this will be my final month for this webinar. Uh, so Clifton here, there are 24, except you and me, there are 24. So yes. uh, if this 24 is aware of this reasonable accommodations and the support services available for students with disabilities, uh, that will make a huge change in the society because now we are aware of this and we will be spreading this message. Okay, now this is available. And so you can apply for this. This support services are available for you all to achieve their highest potential and maximum potential through your entire academic life. And that awareness, if a student and if a, a student who is going to be a professional in the health sector one day we will be getting we will come across several such kind of a students or a children in our entire life so if we are aware of this and that is the change so we will be changing a society so if this 20 plus have this awareness and giving this idea about what is the special access and what sort of accommodations are available so we will be spreading this message and that is what I want from y'all uh, to stand for the rights for the people with disabilities and support them to achieve their maximum potentials and uh, support them to be independent individuals, develop as independent individuals. So that's my message uh, uh, to uh, uh, the participants in this webinar uh, so thank you very much for listening approximately around one hour and so here this is my email address and my contact number if any of you all need any support through the coordinating center for disability studies you're warm wel warmly welcome to contact me either through email or either through my contact number and uh, this to you can con you can also contact a coordinating center or a Halana Mitru Sevana for any sort of support. So thank you, thank you madam. for listening and thank you very much for giving this opportunity to discuss about this equal access policy again. Now as the seminar, thank you so much madam for coming and joining us uh, for sharing this information and now as the seminar comes to a close, uh, this is the time to conclude with this valuable discussion. This was a very valuable and insightful discussion. This is a kind of discussion that changes lives, that can change how people are perceived. For example, if we, we all know that in other countries, we have seen disabled people who are extremely, extremely intelligent. They do all kinds of stuff. They are capable. The reason for that is not they are much more intelligent, but the reason is they are have they have more accommodations. They have a society, a support structure around them to support them. And this is something that we have to bring into our society, inclusion. And uh, today I hope that we uh, came to know a lot about how we can compensate for the people who are disabled. Uh, the, the perfect world is the people who are different, people with special needs. How And also we came to know how we can compensate and help to create a society which is inclusive in all ways, how we can dedicate ourselves, how we can be part of the change, how we can be the part which the change starts onwards. And uh, what is the importance for standing for the rights that even every single one of us here, we have the power to change. We have the power to show others that we are capable to just give the maximum out of even the most difficult people. So uh, now, uh, now it's the time for the audience. We can give them a chance to ask any questions, any comments, questions. 
and uh, we would love to hear you from them. So anyone, if you want to share anything on, uh, we would, uh, we, we are happy to listen to you. Yes, Mara. Uh, any questions or comments we are happy to get. Um, hi, uh, this is Lakshika. I'm a uh, speech yes. and language therapist uh, from uh, Sirima Obandarana and Children's Hospital. So um, it's a very fascinating uh, discussion and uh, I got to learn a lot more about the facilities and accommodation. Just a quick question. You have just uh, roughly touched up on it. Uh, I was wondering uh, about uh, my... Uh, client group that I'm working with is basically for going to school. Uh, so um, parents are really wondering about how to access these uh, accommodation uh, uh, facilities. Like what are the 21 general categories that is available for their kids? So it's it's very difficult to trace that knowledge. So uh, uh I would be glad if you can share that so that uh, if uh, I have a, a parent or a teacher who is like keen on it, so I can share that with them. Thank you so much. So, uh, thank you very much, Lakshika, for joining uh, for this webinar. And it is kind of wonderful. Uh, so, Lakshika, so actually this uh, reasonable accommodation, this general accommodations, and this specific accommodations, it was available on their website, uh, examination department website previously. But uh, at this moment, actually, we are not able to see this document. Uh, but uh, if anyone interested about it, actually, they can request it through the uh, examination department and they can get the list. And of course, for you, for the benefit of your clientele, we will be able to, I'll be able to give you the list. So thank you so much. You can, you can, uh, uh, based on the list and you can, uh, the parents can request the accommodation uh, uh, that they want or that you are kind of uh, recommending for that student. So for the moment, I will be able to provide you the list, but actually it was available on their website. But currently at this time, uh, we are not able to see the list. I think there might be, they might be modifying it. Uh, for yeah. the moment, uh, we are not able to see that in the website. Thank you so much. But of uh, course, I'll be, able to, I'll be able to give it to you. Yeah, I, I'll write to you. Thank you so much, sure. Dr. Pitney. Yeah, sure. Uh, so it seems that we are making a change already. Uh, so anyone else with any other questions? Uh, you can reach right now. Hi, Telini. Uh, Dumini here. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah Dumini. Hi. Uh, thank you for that uh, informative presentation. Uh, I would like to add little more details regard uh, to the question asked by Clifton regarding um, the uh, special access policy and the reasonable accommodations currently implemented in the higher education system. So uh, at, uh, at, uh, sorry, currently um, different universities have their own uh, policies and uh, they follow uh, uh, different accommodation um, methods uh, based on the students with disabilities they have uh, at the university or at the uh, higher education institute at the moment. However, University Grants Commission, um, uh, the Standing Committee on Education of the University Grants Commission um, has a subcommittee uh, that uh, uh, that was um, uh, that uh, was focusing on developing a policy framework for special needs education uh, to cater the needs of. Uh, students with disabilities in higher educational institutes. So the first draft uh, was done last year and um, maybe in this year or in the beginning of next year, it will be implemented. So all the state universities and the other higher educational institutes in Sri Lanka um, will follow that. Okay, and um, Delini, I have a question, actually more than a question, I, I would like uh, to hear your view about this. So um, our students uh, 
may feel that they are friend or uh, the the uh, a junior or a senior who is having a disability uh, getting this special access may especially during the exams is a you know a, is a benefit for them uh, which uh, the other students are not receiving and uh, they might feel that uh, this is unfair for the uh, ordinary students so do you what 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 can you like what is your view about this uh, so uh, there may be there may be such thoughts but um, we we actually give accommodations we provide accommodations because uh, actually there is a need if there is if there is not a need uh, through a center or through any university in any university they will not provide accommodations if the student is not having a need and also as i mentioned at any point we also can get uh, disabled because of temporary uh, even with a fracture or uh, uh, any sort of uh, difficulties where uh, we might get disabled and we might want the accommodations so i think uh, we need to think if i am facing such situation uh, how i want to be treated by others to be treated by others so if i am thinking about in that if i'm thinking in that way so i will I am thinking like the student might not think that the student will get benefit because if I face the same situation, what uh, sort of support that I need, how I want others to think of, about me and how I uh, how I want others to support me. So if we think like that, I think if a student feel like a student with disabilities getting accommodation is a kind of a favor for them and the students with uh, uh, special uh, disabilities will get benefit by having these accommodations i want them to think if i am having such sort of disability what i feel and how i feel so i think at that point they will not be able to think like that thank you so much for your explanation Delini. Thank yeah. you. Uh, and Dumini, thank you very much as one of the former directors of the Coordinating Center for the Students with Disabilities. Thank you very much for that valuable information you have given us uh, and additional information for the audience. Thank you very much, Dumini. Yes, thank you, Dumini, madam. Thank you so much. So uh, anyone else who wants to, uh, if your mic is having, if your mic have any issues, you can also share it through the chat. I can read it to madam. Any other discussions or any questions or queries? Okay, it seems like uh, our questions are done for now. Uh, so this was a really, really amazing discussion. And I could see like this since we started this, it didn't end and it didn't even go five minutes off. And we suddenly started to make a change. People are approaching and there's a change here. So uh, I just remembered something that uh, you would all be familiar with Louis Braille, who was uh, who was the pioneer who found the Braille system. He was a blind person who couldn't see. So he found the Braille system and uh, uh, he told a quote, it's called, we must be treated as equals and communication is the best way we can bring this about. And that's what we have seen here. The best way is communication and the communication is the key to all kinds of things. So uh, now as we are going to the end of this discussion, I would like to thank everyone who came here, uh, the host of the meeting. I would like to especially thank Aura Media and the Students Affairs Division for facilitating this uh, amazing webinar, which was fruitful. And also, of course, Pirini Madam, our amazing speech language therapist here who uh, took her time in the day in a, even in a busy schedules uh, we still have our research works going on so all of this stuff like when we come forth here we see how much work our lecturers do have they have to go through all kinds of pressure but dedicating your time preparing this and coming and doing this for us is such an amazing thing uh, that uh, we got here it's it's a gift almost and I would like to thank everyone else here who has attended, came here and shared your thoughts, shared your ideas. And uh, 
Uh, thank you in advance for everyone who's about to make a change with the things that we learned today. So thank you. And Tilly, madam, if you want to talk anything, uh, it's the time. Uh, thank you very much for listening. And uh, the, my final message again is like, uh, stand for the rights for the people with disabilities because uh, we think if we get disabled at some point, how we want the society to be treat us. So if we think like that, we will be able to make this change. So that is my final message. And thank you very much for listening to this uh, webinar. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much, everyone. So have a nice uh, rest uh, till tomorrow. Thank you, madam. Thank you, everyone on it. And uh, good night.